All right, if I'm acting a little bit giddy, it might be because I'm giddy. And I'm a little bit up, so I'm giddy up. I, Sam and I and our entire team met in Bradenton, Florida, his hometown recently, and we had an incredible time together. This is where the those who are part of our Platinum program, which is a 24-7 on-call coaching and a lot of other things, we meet with them once a year. And last year and this year, we met in Bradenton. By the way, if you're interested in that, if you want, if you want to be a part of our Platinum program, uh, we got some spots open, three of four that are open right now. And basically, it gives you access to our team 24-7, to me, to Sam, to others. You meet with us, uh, the entire team, via Zoom once a month. Uh, we're on call for you 24-7, and we meet in person once a year. There are a lot of other benefits to it. But if you're interested in our Platinum program, uh, come and get that. I'm going to get to my point. I know we got a, we got a podcast to talk about. I'm going to get to my point. But we had a lot of good presentations. But, man, the presentation by Brown was just off the charts. And they, uh, Todd uh, and his team came, and they presented to us some information that you know, you're thinking, man, I wish every church could hear this about facilities and and what's going on there. Really, really sharp people. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Brown Church Development Group, Sam, because we had them in Bradenton and they did an incredible job for one of our mini presentations during Platinum. So, yeah, I just had somebody reach out to me about facility issues and Brown was my top recommendation. And you know, I, I certainly will echo that on the airwaves. They really are amazing at what they do. I absolutely love Brown Church Development Group. Absolutely. They're responsive too. Hey, the topic of this particular podcast, how to encourage church members who serve behind the scenes. Sam is probably one of the best people that I've ever seen doing this, pastors. He wouldn't say that, but uh, uh, so much of this just represents Sam's uh, really strategic and compassionate heart to to reach people. And we're, we're going to talk about that. All of you church leaders, man, tune into this because there's so many practical ways how you encourage church members who often are not seen by the others. Before we get to that, thank you, California Baptist University. We are so appreciative of their sponsorship. We're appreciative of this program that they have. I've said it several times in here. Yep, universities have college credit for high school students, but not university don't have this. Now, one part of it is that you are in class virtually with college students, even though you're in high school. You may be a sophomore, a junior, senior, but you're in class with them. Another thing is the first course is free. That's absolutely incredible. Next thing is every course after that is $166 per credit hour. The regular rate is $613 per credit. That's unreal. Hour. Is, I mean, that's unreal. Think about all the credit that you could get while you're in high school at the college level. And we hope you would end up going to California Baptist. This is an incredible Christian university, beautiful, great ethos. But even if you don't, most schools are going to accept every course that's offered by CBU because it's a highly touted uh, institution. So California Baptist, look at the links, look at the information on and tell tell your sophomores, your juniors and seniors how they can get this credit and get ahead in college before they go to college. So, Sam, let's talk about how to encourage church members who serve behind the scenes. I am a part time resident of Bradenton. Of course, that means my church is Sam's Church, West Bradenton. I see you do it. Uh, I see people on your staff do it. Well, I see most of the people on your staff do it, but I see people on your staff do it. And uh, I see you do it quite regularly, even though I'm not with you during the week. Uh, this 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 represents really your philosophy of pastoral ministry and pastoral leadership. You wouldn't have said that, but I've told many people what you do. So let's talk about this type of encouragement that you can provide. Yeah, and I also want to thank Henry from Ontario. I got the idea from him. So thank you. And he knows who he is. So he reached out to us at Church Answers and said, do an episode on this. And I thought, 
that's a really good idea. We haven't talked thank about you, that before. So thank you, Henry from Ontario. He knows, you don't know who he is, but he knows who he is. And that's really all, and God knows who he is. And that's all that really matters. Uh, so, so thank you, Henry. Yeah, this is a philosophy. And I think that's the right word, dad. Um, this is a philosophy of encouragement. And you have to be intentional about saying something, complimenting and encouraging those who are behind the scenes. Guess what? They're behind the scenes, which means they're often not seen. So you have to go where they are in order to encourage them. And this is one reason that I absolutely love this age old management principle that's probably really dated, but it still works. Management by walking around. M-B-W-A, as it's often called. This is a very simple thing. Sunday morning, Wednesday night, those are our rhythms. I think that a lot of churches still do Sunday morning, Wednesday nights. Certainly Sunday morning, perhaps you have a Saturday night service. But these are, these are common times when the church meets. If you have the opportunity... And if, and if you don't, you should make it the opportunity, you know, find somebody to fill in you, fill in for you for a week. Uh, just walk around. When all of your people are on campus, just start walking around randomly and you will see things that you would otherwise not see. And you will see people serving in areas. Perhaps you didn't even know they were serving in that area or you don't even know them that well or you haven't spoken to them in a while or you, you haven't told them thank you in a while. Simply walk around and as you see people serving, Thank them for serving. That is the philosophy of encouragement and the MBWA principle still works quite this well. Sec this second one was an aha moment for me when you put together this podcast, Sam. Uh, it's Now that I'm looking at it, it's just so common sense. I wish I had done that. But most of the time we think volunteers, even behind the scene volunteers, but we, most of the time we think in a formal setting or an announcement. Now, let's thank the people who are responsible for this. And we, we give them a big applause and, and that's it. Your suggestion is really ingenious. Find a way to thank them in a casual conversation. Doesn't mean that you have to leave off the thanks in the formal time, but thank them casually. Boy, that'd mean the world to them. Yeah, and this works really well one on one. Um, so I, right before this podcast, I walked into the church. Uh, there was my neighbor. So my neighbor, his name is Roy. Roy and Terry are awesome. They uh, live literally across the street from me, and I've met uh, them. they're they're great people. Uh, and uh, they've joined our church. Uh, I would say they're new, but they're getting to the point to where they're not new anymore. Um, and Roy was in the choir room painting, just painting by himself, because that's what he does. This room needs to be painted. I'm going to go paint it. So I walked in there. I was like, hey, man, what's going on? We started chatting. And I was just like, by the way, thank you for painting. I really appreciate you doing this because it needed to be done. And he was like, hey, you know what? It's my honor. I enjoy doing it. That was very casual, uh, simple almost a nothing sort of thing. Not to him. Be in the, well, but just be in the habit of thanking people for serving in the church. And you can do that just when you talk to them. Hey, thanks for being such a good deacon. Hey, I hear really good things about your third grade class. You've been teaching that for 20 years. Like it, it means a lot to me that you do that. It doesn't have to be this, you know, formality. It doesn't need to be long and, you know, over the top. Just be in a habit of regularly saying thank you to people in your normal conversations. And I think those are the times that are often people feel the most encouragement from you. I think ab absolutely that is the case. Another thing you and Aaron, that's Sam's wife, are very good at is uh, having people to your home for dinner, dessert, coffee. Just welcome them into to your place. Now, I will say if you go into Sam's house, there will probably be chaos. There will be his four kids and maybe <laughs> double or triple that number. You never know. Uh, I've been over at his place when I was keeping the kids and he was gone. He and Aaron were gone somewhere. And all of a sudden I look around and there's a neighbor kid that has just walked into the house. I thought it was randomly, but y'all said, no, that's not, that's not random. That, that's, that's, that's custom. 
but you have you have uh, you, you invite a lot of people to your home, but Ben would work well for long term volunteers. Yeah, and you know I'm I'm gonna get a little flack for this because you know when I say it, I I sometimes get people kind of pushing back, and I understand why, but I'm I'm gonna go there anyway. Um, if you look at the list of qualifications of a pastor, very very similar to to deacon, by the way. Um, but one of the things that stands out to me is this idea of having people in your home. I mean, it says a pastor needs to be able to teach. A pastor needs to be able to, uh, you know, not be greedy. And, you know, this is laundry list of things that are very, very good. You know, it's the Bible. So excellent list of qualifications. And it right, right in there is hospitality. Like you need to have people over at your house. Well, I got to, you know, if, if you don't ever have anybody at your house, you don't want to host, you have zero desire to, to, to be friendly and to, to bring people in. I'm just kidding, man. Are you really a pastor? I mean, I, it's, that's what the Bible says. And oh, by the way, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, admonition or the, uh, you know, the Bible saying, Hey, go do this, um, is right up there with preaching. So, you know, you may say, well, I'm a good enough, I'm, I'm a preacher. Well, you know, in order to be a pastor, you have to do this. And so I know I'm being a bit harsh, but, you know, you've got to have people in your house. You've got to be willing to sit down with people across the table. You've got to be invite people out for lunch. You've got to have coffees and dinners and desserts and all of those things. Um, but because one, I think it's a biblical mandate, but two, I just think it's a really good way for people, particularly people who are behind the scenes, to, to get in their life. So invite them over to your house. It really is that simple. Uh, public recognition for my tribe, introverts. We love to get together and not talk. We love to get together and not be together. It's, <laughs> I love, I want all introverts to unite in our own homes. Uh, well, even introverts need public recognition. Um, and yes, yeah, sometimes like, you know, and I'll do this. I'll, I'll I'll call somebody out, and I'll say some. You know, somebody this week did a really good job. I want to point them out. You know, and so and, you know, I, this is not necessarily a Sunday morning setting. Sometimes it is, but we have these rally Sundays that we call once a quarter, where we um, train our train our volunteers and, and and our leaders, and we have a session like an all together session. And this is often where I'll, I'll point somebody out. And you know, the, the introverts are the ones that kind of cringe when you do that. Like, are you really going to do this? But I can also tell like deep down that, you know, th they don't really want a lot of attention and they certainly don't want it for a long time. No, but I don't. can tell, I can tell deep down that they really appreciate when you publicly recognize them. So, you know, if this is an introvert who serves behind the scenes, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity when warranted to, to just say, Hey, you know, in front of everybody, you did a really good job. Now, for the sake of those who are introverts, um, you don't want to camp there because that secret sort of all oh, that was nice quickly turns into no, please shut up uh, pretty quickly. So um, you don't you, you don't have to camp there. But even for your introverts, I think public recognition every now and then in front of an audience, whatever that audience may be, the whole church or a group of leaders, I think it's important. I think that's another way that you can recognize people behind the scenes. With the advance of technology, uh, with the decreasing price of technological tools, more and more churches, even smaller churches, are using videos in their worship service and other places. Uh, sometimes it's announcement, but a good place to use the videos is to show some of these behind the scene volunteers, church members. What a great encouragement when they look up and there they are, and they're being thanked or touted for their ministry. Yeah, we use videos all the time. Uh, we use them online. We use them in the services. I mean, it's two or three a week that we use. Um, and it's not always to recognize people behind the scenes, of course, but they see themselves in the video. And when you see yourself in the video, and the point of the video is, you, church, you did a really good job. And there's a selection of people in that video. And, oh, that was me. Um, I think that's really encouraging. And it so is. as and it's just keep this in mind, let's say you're doing a VB. A lot of churches will do a VBS recap video, right? It's just not every church does recap videos as much as we do. I'm not saying you need to. 
Um, but let's say you use them sparingly, you don't do them that often. But a lot of churches do a vacation Bible school or a VBS recap. Don't just record the people that are on the platform. Don't just record the key leaders or the pastor of the church. Make sure that you tell your videographer or whoever's doing this, even if they're just capturing the stuff on their phone, get the people behind the scenes. Get mm -hmm. pictures of them, get video of them doing their thing too. Don't miss them. Uh, so this is just something to think of when you do a recap video. Uh, it's very easy just to gravitate towards the people who are out front because they're out front and they like to be out front. Well, don't neglect those who are behind the scenes too. You taught me about handwritten notes. You didn't teach me well enough because I'm highly inconsistent in writing notes. I know you're not perfect in it, but compared to me, you are much more consistent. Handwritten notes mean the world to people. Yeah, I do this in waves. Um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll start doing it and then I'll stop for a little bit and then I'll start again. Um, I'm not as consistent as I need to be, but I enjoy just taking some time, jotting a few things down on a handwritten note. So I'm a lead pastor. So this is for those of you who are lead pastors or soul pastors or in um, kind of a key leadership position where you may not be, you may not see all the stuff at ground level. I, I mean, I, I'm preaching on Sunday mornings. I don't see what's happening in the kids ministry. So what I'll do is I'll ask my team, all right, who did something really well this week? I'm going to write them a handwritten note. Mm. You know, who did something I didn't see? Who did something that was in a place where I wasn't? And I'll just write the note. I'll say, hey, I heard about blah, 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 whatever you did. Um, and, the, you know, just want you to know, people like you make this church what it is. You're awesome. It can be three sentences. doesn't have to be long. Put that in a handwritten note. Particularly, uh, what's very powerful about it is they know you weren't there. They know that you didn't see that firsthand, that, that somebody had to tell you about this. And then it becomes this thing where, all right, who told the pastor that I did this? And it becomes even more of an encouragement that feeds upon itself because it's like, all right, well, the children's minister, she's the one that 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 said something. And then they have a convert. Did you tell Sam that I, you know, I did this? And then the children's minister has an opportunity. Yeah, I told him, that, hey, you did do a good job. That's why I told him. So that, that handwritten note, um, has legs. It's got a long tail if you've got a business principle there. And it can really feed on itself for quite some time. So handwritten notes are great, especially if you weren't there. You, you may think, well, should I write a handwritten note for, for something I wasn't there to see? Absolutely, you should. And, you know, powerful. It is. It yeah, is it's very powerful. powerful. So you also got key volunteers, some who serve behind the scenes, but there are other key volunteers that are visible. One of the most one of the best things you can do for them is to equip them to send them somewhere where they can become stronger in what they do, because you're not only equipping them to do their ministry better. You are encouraging them by investing in them in that particular opportunity. Yeah, a tech team, send them to a conference on how to, you know, mix sound, uh, you know, you know, those who serve in the children's ministry. Uh, send them to a kidsmen conference, student ministry. Um, you know, send them to a place where they can learn more. Um, you know, build that into your budget. Not every church has the ability to build that into the budget, but you could do something like, "Hey, uh, I'll pay if you can get there. I'll pay for a, a night hotel and the ticket. You know, or whatever the conference costs. You know, there there are ways to do this to encourage your volunteers, particularly those who." Um, are serving behind the scenes, offer to, to do something for them to help develop and equip them in their ministry area. If you have a budget in a denomination or network, I saw a classic example of how this could have been carried out. Uh, I spoke at a regional conference, regional for a state, a part of the state, and they they sold it out at 400 people. That was, that was the cap. I mean, it was incredible crowd. They had an hour of worship, which included about 35 minutes of me speaking. And then they had 30 to 40 breakouts in two different hours, but you were gone by noon, but they had 30 to 40. So you pick two of them and then they will send you shortly thereafter all the other breakouts via digital and man i looked at some of the breakouts i wanted to go to them 
I mean, I wish I wish I'd gone to the breakout instead of listen to me, but I couldn't go to the breakout because they made everybody listen to me. That is a way, and it's my understanding that the conference was free or minimal cost. And so a lot of smaller churches were able to do that. So I'm just telling you denominational and network leaders, that's something you can do to really help your churches. And kudos to those people in Athens, Georgia, who made it all happen. Yeah, well, thank you again. It's a good story. I'm glad you're sticking to it, Dad. Um, (laughs) Thank you again, Henry, uh, for this idea. Uh, And, you know, if you're a listener, and you have an idea, hey, send it to me, Sam at yeah, Sam at churchanswers.com. Um, you know, we've done, I, I've, d- between the two of us and the multiple podcasts, not just this one we're on, we've done thousands of podcasts. And I think it's that's plural now, thousands. Um, so, you know, maybe we've covered it before, but maybe it's been a while. So you know, if you're a regular listener, you know, reach out to me, Sam at churchanswers.com. And hey, I'd love to hear about whatever, you know, whatever's on your mind and, and, and may make for a good episode. So uh, don't be afraid to, to send a suggestion and don't be afraid to check out the Courage for Life Study Bible. Thank you, Tyndale, for publishing this Bible. They have such a great selection of Bibles. They do Bibles better than anyone else. I love the selection at Tyndale. And the Courage for Life Study Bible is definitely one you want to go check out. The Bible can be overwhelming for some, and people can have trouble knowing where to start. No matter where you open the Courage for Life Study Bible, whether it be for the, for men or women, they have two, the Courage for Life Study Bible for men and the Courage for Life Study Bible for women, uh, you're going to find the help that you need to dive right in. So go to the link in the show notes or courageforlifebible.com and check out the Courage for Life Study Bible. We just heard from our other sponsor, um, California Baptist University. You know, I think of graduations. I think of, you know, milestones. Some of these our study Christ- Bibles. That, our, our Christmas, that's not too far away. Christmas is coming up. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, these study Bibles that Tyndale puts out would make for a great gift. So the Courage for Life Study Bible is a very good one. All right. Listeners, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you, Henry, for your suggestion. And uh, thank you, YouTubers, for watching all that we do. Give us a thumbs up. That helps the algorithms. Give us a rate, a review, or subscribe on your podcasting app. And we'll be here next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. We'll check you in that episode. Hey, folks, this is a PS to our podcast. We got some exciting stuff that we want to offer you absolutely for free. Sam, when you think about predictive factors in, in, in a church's growth, if you take out demographics, what are some things that come to mind? Just just two. I mean, don't give me a list of 10. Just just two or three things that come to mind on predictive growth of a church. Well, evangelism and whether okay. the church is doing it or not. Bingo. And then I, and then, and then I will add is in an ongoing evangelism emphasis. Double bingo, well. double, and maybe something about leadership and their commitment to that. So all of the above. Evangelistic churches have evangelistic pastors. Is it, the staff, is the lead pastor doing the work themselves? We have a free download for you. And it's actually a sheet that you can self-score. You answer 20 questions anywhere from uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And we come back and we predict what your growth rate is going to be for the next year in worship attendance. It's not a perfect tool, but it's a good tool. There's a link to that for the for the attendance predictor. Look in the show notes. You'll absolutely love it. That's cool. We'll see you soon. <laughs>